You're welcome to the sports segment. My name is Benedict Osu. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. A lot to talk about. To look at the proposed meeting between the normalization committee and the club, sir, which was supposed to happen today, but it's been cancelled. Also, we look at what's going to happen later tonight in the Africa Cup of Nations, the third place of game uh, between Nigeria and Tunisia. And also, there's been some transfer news. Uh, we look at what's happening in terms of players moving in and out of their respective clubs ahead of the start of the new season. And of course, we have to start with one Ghanaian player, and that's uh, Raphael Jamena. Well, Jamena has sealed a move to Real Zaragoza uh, in the Spanish Segunda. So what's going to happen is that next season, Raphael Jamena is no longer going to be at Levante, a club that he played uh, last season where he made 12 appearances and couldn't score a go uh, scored only one goal. And now he has had, he's had the opportunity uh, to move on to uh, Real Zaragoza. That's going to be in the Spanish Segunda. B. We'll talk about that. Also, uh, we'll look at the African Arm Wrestling Championship. But before we do that, let's go through the Rafael Jamna story again. And the uh, Spanish Segunda side, that's Rosa Ragoza, will unveil him uh, today. That's Wednesday. And Jamna joined the White on a season long loan deal from La Liga outfit. That's a UD Levante. The move is expected to provide the Ghana International with much playing time as well as to ensure his development in the forthcoming campaign. We'll be presented as a player of uh, Zaragoza before the media uh, this morning. That will be around 10.30 a.m. at the La Bromaldo Stadium. And later at 11 a.m., he will step onto the pitch of the stadium to be received by the fans. And as I mentioned earlier, Jamna turned out 12 appearances for Levante during the 2018-19 Spanish La Liga season. All right, so away from Rafael Jamana, let's do some arm wrestling. And the Ghana arm wrestling team uh, were this year's uh, Africa arm wrestling challenge, which was held in Bamako. In all, they won 16 medals. Uh, Charles Sesi, who is uh, president of the arm wrestling association, has expressed delight with their feet. We got three years, and um, we strategically have decided to unnet young talents and take them into Africa. You and I understand that the future is in the young talent, so that's what we have to do. Now, we went with some 16-year-olds, two of them, and they won double gold for us. The plan is that we prepare them from this age. By the time they get to the top, they're already world champions. So we would have to work with the schools. That's um, senior high, G GES. We need to work with them. We need to work with the communities and then get the young talents to be able to play. Now, we want to concentrate on girls, pullers. We want more girls to do pulling. And then technically, the physically challenged are good at it. I see. Especially those on wheels. They, are, they have natural power in the arm. So we want to take advantage of girls, young boys and girls, and then physically challenge. It is why Egypt was able to beat us. They brought three disabled athletes, and all of them won double gold, double gold, double gold. It is why they were able to beat Ghana to, you know, the third position. Otherwise, we would have been second, they would be third. But they brought para athletes, we didn't go with para athletes. Wow. All right, Charles Sesebe is uh, president of the Gum Wrestling Association, and they were this year's African Arm Wrestling uh, Challenge, which happened in Mali and won 16 medals. Five gold medals, six bronze medals, as well as the uh, other. Uh, silver medals they won. Kudos to them. Of course, we have to talk about the Africa Cup of Nations and it's ending this very Friday with a final, uh, which we are all looking forward to. It's going to be between Senegal and Algeria. It's been how many days after 21 days uh, in the competition? A lot has happened. Managers are losing their jobs yesterday. Uh, the uh, managers that lost uh, their job after not participating well in this uh, competition, that's a uh, client Seedorf and Patrick Clivet of Cameroon. Well, uh, Egypt also sacked their manager, and we are picking up that Hassan Sheata is likely to make a sensational return to the team. My colleague Baba Tando has more in today's upcoming minute.
most successful coach of all time, Hassan Shehata, could be making a comeback to the national team as manager following the exit of Javier Aguirre. He is reported to have agreed on terms with the government, but is yet to put pen to paper. The Pharaohs were knocked out of the round of 16 at this year's Afghan by South Africa, representing their worst performance at the competition. The 72-year-old who won the Afghan with Egypt in three consecutive years, 2006, 2008 and 2010, is expected to restore discipline and strictness in the team. He is likely to return with his trusted duo of Ahmed Hassan and legendary goalkeeper Isam El Hadari. Tweet at us at Joy Sports with the hashtag Joy Afghan. Salam. Back home, there's been reactions following the cancellation of the proposed meeting between representatives of clubs and the Ghana Football Association. Now, the meeting was to, you know, deliberate on the proposal to synchronize Ghana's league calendar with Europe as mooted by some club officials. The cancellation of the meeting originally scheduled for today, according to the NC, was necessitated by discouraging response from the invited clubs. Let's go quickly go on the phone lines and speak to Patrick Akutu, who is spokesperson of uh, Premier League side Media Mercy. Pato, I mean, your initial reaction when, when you read this statement from the NC? Well, uh, good morning to you, Benedict. Uh, that, that was to be expected uh, because there was no going to be any meeting uh, today. Uh, the clubs had signaled our intention of not honoring this kind of a club trap uh, invitation. Why? Get on arrival. We have made the point that the only way that we can convert with the normalization committee would be at Congress. Mm -hmm. There are two principal congresses that must take place. The one that will have to look at the statutes for its ratification and the one that will lead to the process of the election of a new GF president and executive committee. Mm. We have barely two months to go and we will not we will not be part of any clandestine attempt to stay on longer than the September 29th or so that they are supposed to run. These are all calculated like a well hatched plan to ensure that this normalization committee stay on longer than expected. I mean we've had a lot of a lot of conjecture and speculation in the media about attempts to ensure they stay on till twenty twenty and football club was like and we will let them know that we are the principal actors of this game and we will control what happens going forward. We will not allow that to happen. You want to go to Congress? That's that the only thing we want to do. We want to you get to know the roadmap for the election of a new GFA president. It is clear mm. that the giving, if they are giving even 200 years, there will be nothing that they can offer anybody. All right. We want to go to Congress. Patrick, thank you very much. We'll find time and I'm talk with, more I'm on with. this. Uh, thank you so much. So that was Patrick Akutu, spokesperson of Media Mercy. That's how we end sports. Thanks so much.